Good morning. Welcome, Breakfast in Biology, day 45. Day 45. Look who's here. All these names, Mrs. Smith. Ooh, yes. Bounty day number two. All right. We'll call out the bounties at the end, but you can still say hi if you came because of a bounty. Who's here? Zuli, Eli, Alexia, Abby, Jocelyn, Emily, Darius, Dom, Gladys, Annie, Finley, Maya, Lexi, Lurker. Woo. <laughs> Lurker. <laughs> she doesn't have a name anymore. No, and like even when we we're back in school, I feel like, like I said, it's going to be Lurker. Yeah, back of her shirt will say Lurker. Lurker. All right. So yesterday, Carissa, too, is here. <laughs> we gave you a little assignment. And you know what? I'm really excited, Mrs. Smith, because there's like 36 slides already completed on that assignment. And we're going to get to that tomorrow. So if you haven't done it yet, you still have some time before tomorrow. Um, Bird. actually we might get to it tomorrow. We might get to it Thursday. We're not sure yet. We're not positive yet when that's going to happen, but we will get to it. Thank you for doing the slides. We keep doing it yesterday. Oh, where are we at? I don't know, but I'm calling out Leah because she's new. So I'm excited to see because Alexia oh. says she's here. Radik is here and yes, is here and Cohen's here and Mr. Noble's here. So just a few more calls. So a new name. I love that. We were talking about this guy yesterday. Mr. Tudor. And this, yes. And this guy. Old, young, old, young, old, young, old, young, old, young. So we were talking about a young Charles Darwin. We were talking about how he made the decision to dump on, jump on a boat that was terrible because he was seasick all the time and he drove all around the world, drove, sailed all around the world. And I have one word written down for today on a piece of scrap paper I have here in my hand. One word. I'm not going to hold it up because it's probably spelled wrong. Um, curiosity. And I think this is really important. I was watching a thing. Somebody posted on Facebook today a thing from, oh, my gosh. You ever have that moment where the name's about to come out of your mouth and then the name disappears right as you're about to say it? Like you're thinking it and it just. Did it disappear all of a sudden? Yeah. Who's the astrophysicist that's so popular? Has his own TV show. Astrophysicist. Oh, my gosh. It was right there, and it popped, didn't it? This is killing me right now. In the chat. Very popular astrophysicist. Oh, my gosh. I follow him on Twitter. Why yeah. is it not like... Has his own TV show. Can any of our students help us out? Have it now. It'll come to me. All right, we're going to move on. Anyway, he was talking about parents and, and raising children. I don't know. And... Harris is like, what's coming out? And that's not right. But it's like, it's 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 something that has to, like, rem for some reason, is reminding me of that. Who is it? That's driving me crazy. <laughs> talking about curiosity, about not stifling curiosity. That one of the, he basically said adults that are scientists are children that never lost their, their curiosity, their ability to look at the natural world and think about it. And Charles Darwin is like the king of this, right? He had this natural curiosity for things. He didn't see a beetle walking across the, the driveway and go. That's why. Neil deGrasse Tyson, is that who you're talking yes. about? Neil no, Neil I said Patrick Harris. Okay, great. Okay. Yes. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank you, uh, Eli, Annie. That was awesome. Patrick Harris. I'm sorry. So... He he looked at everything, thought about everything, wanted to know about everything, like just, just had this natural curiosity. So he's on this boat. He's traveling around the world. We showed you a picture of the boat, the, the, the HMS, his, message, his majesty's ship, the Beagle, HMS Beagle, F sailing around the world, I'm going to flying, um, making lots of stops. On those stops, he's collecting organisms. He's He's like... You know, I, I don't know why, but some scientists back in the day, it wasn't enough just to look at them. They would kill them, put them in preserves, and they he would send them back to Europe. And so as he's traveling around the world, he's sending back samples, specimens of all these weird organisms that he's finding that he's never seen before. Stops at the Galapagos Islands, and he's looking around, and he's making sketches. And so these are... Somebody mentioned yesterday Darwin's finches. And so as Darwin's sitting on the Galapagos, he's looking at these birds. 
But those actually Darwin sketches, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I don't know. Um, and he notices something about them that they all eat different things. And then he notices that the birds that eat leaves, their beaks are shaped a little bit differently than the birds that eat grubs or the ones that eat the fruits or the ones that eat insects. And he notices these little subtle differences in these different birds. And he notices that all the birds, remember where we're at, we're on the Galapagos Islands, we're off the mainland on these little chain of islands. He noticed that there was birds on South America, because they stopped there too, that were very similar to the ones he was seeing on the Galapagos, but just a little bit different. And this is the point in Darwin's life where he says to himself, hmm. I'm starting to believe that things change. And what we need you to understand is that in this time period was considered heresy. You know, it was it was bad. You know, religion had stated at that time, things don't change. God created everything, created a certain way. And so Darwin starts to think, well, maybe things do change. And maybe the interpretation that we have of things not changing isn't quite right. And we could talk more about that when we get into what makes a species and things like that, that interpretation. But for now, just go with this idea that he's going, I think things change. And Darwin's a pretty smart guy. So he starts to think not only about these birds that he's seeing and how the birds might have changed, but he starts thinking about other things that we know about. And so like other things that we know about are things like dogs. Well, and it's not, and it's not just that he, and please don't think that he only saw the finches on the Galap Galapagos. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He saw things between tortoises and like all different species, but he did. He started thinking about other things. And like, if you think about like, if you have a pet dog, where did your dog come from? You know, who are their parents? Who are their parents' parents? Who are their parents' 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 parents? parents? Can you think about a time where, you know, there were these wolves that were more docile? And so people started, you know, keeping these docile wolves as pets. And over time, breeding a docile pet with a docile or a docile wolf with a docile wolf got you some docile wolves and then you kept the docile ones if there were aggressive ones you know let them go into the wild and so eventually you get to a point where you're having a dog and it doesn't stop there i mean we have how many different breeds of dogs i know specifically like i have a yorkie Bichon mix why do we say it's a mix because it's a mix of two dogs mom was a yorkie dad was a Bichon, so i have a mix so I have in turn mixed these two categories of dogs together. Now we can't just mix everything, you know, like there are some organisms that we can hybrid like ligers and tigons. Yes, they're real things. Um, if you have a, uh, may I, I always switch these in my head, so don't quote me on this, a male lion, a female tiger, I think it's a liger. And then the opposite of that is a Tigon. It depends on who mom is and who dad is. So like it depends, but it depends on the number of chromosomes. And so like we can look at these things that we have helped manipulate as humans. You know, those of you, maybe you hate vegetables, um, but if you eat broccoli or cauliflower or cabbage or Brussels sprouts or kale, they all come from their common ancestor is wild mustard. I remember when I was in college, we went out into on a field trip. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, I was an environmental science major. I have a BS in environmental science. So like I did a lot of things in the field. I actually worked for the state for a little bit for the Bureau of Freshwater Fisheries. But when I was in the field looking at things in class, my professor picked an acorn up off the ground and asked us all to try it. And I'm like, you're nuts. It's an acorn. 
Like I'm not eating that. And he said, you do realize that this is the only nut that's grown absolutely naturally that's not poisonous. The fact that we eat almonds and that we eat peanuts and that we eat all these other nuts, that's done through manipulation over time through this idea of adaptive radiation from changing it. That original thing was not edible. Corn has changed so much over time. These nice plump chickens that you get in from the grocery store a hundred years ago, they were skinnier and tinier, but we've bred the biggest chickens together now, there's other things, too, but we've bred the biggest chickens together to get more big chickens. We breed the dairy cows that produce the most milk in order to get more cows that produce a lot of milk. And when you look at the dogs, like you were talking about the dogs earlier, she has a, a Yorkie Bichon mix, and I have a Golden Retriever. And so one of the things you need to think about, she talked about lions and tigers going together. Why don't we have this whole line of ty of Thailands and, and and stuff? Because we need to have, we, and we'll talk more about this in a little bit. And you would have talked about it with Mister Beichler, the idea of a species, right? So all dogs are dogs; they're all the same species. I could breed a golden retriever with a a a, a, a Bichon mix. Might not work real well. <laughs> you could do it, right? And so the point is. We took dogs and we start to breed those dogs to select for the traits that we want. So look at this little hot dog dog. Like, why in the world does he exist? Why does the Dalmatian exist? Why does a retriever exist? Because we bred dogs that will go and get things and bring them back to us. We bred dogs that can go in little holes and kill rats. We bred dogs like a Doberman for protection. We bred dogs for hunting. We bred dogs for service dogs now. So we pick the traits that we like and we breed for those traits. We down here in the mustard thing that she was talking, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see that. Right down there in the mustard screen thing, right? I, I would like to find this guy. This guy ruined many childhood dinners because they took this wild mustard seed and bred for different parts. They bred for the stem. They bred for the buds to get Brussels sprouts. They bred for terminal buds to get cabbage. They bred for flower custards to get cauliflower. Stems and flowers to get broccoli. I, I like they, they selected for leaves to get the um, Mr. Kopinski plant. I right. love kale. Right. Well, Kopinski <laughs> likes to put it in, you know, in his juicer. Um, so there's people laughing about that right now, I'm sure, because they happen <laughs> for health and you need a big kale drink in the morning. Um, but that those guys ruined my ruined my dinners when I was a kid because Bob would be like, "You're not leaving this table. Do you eat Brussels? Do you eat your Brussels sprouts?" Like, who in the world would eat those? Stop it. Um, so you get the idea. I added one more thing in there, just real quick. If you want to go to the next slide, <laughs> I threw that in there. That is something that I the page. Sorry, my bad. That's all right. I'm used to you making things difficult for me. I am. I am. <laughs> so I just wanted to say though, remember, like relating back to genetics. That like when we're talking about making these offspring, that it is all random and unpredictable. Every single one of these dogs on this slide is a Yorkie Bichon mix. Traits that are inherited are random and unpredictable because of all the things we talked about with meiosis. Even within the litter, that's why dogs look different. Different traits are inherited. Different traits are expressed. So like those are all Yorkie Bichons. So when these things are bred, we don't always get, it's not like, oh, we breed two dairy cows that make a lot of milk and all of them make a lot of milk. You know, we, it's not, they are random and unpredictable because it's a uh, ratio or a percentage of possibilities when we're talking about a Punnett square. And anybody guess which one is my puppy? Just saying, because one of them is mine. So you can guess that in the chat. So before we move on, to the next slide. Charles Darwin sitting not just at the Galapagos, you know, getting off the boat on, on the mainland and looking up at the mountain and seeing that there's this white streak up at the mountain and going up there and finding seashells at the top of the mountain and going, why would there be seashells up here? And being on the Galapagos, looking at all of these different organisms and thinking about artificial selection. When we select for traits, and breed certain dogs to get certain traits. And thinking about that 
This is where the theory of evolution is born. This is where the mechanism, this is where Charles Darwin, and Charles Darwin was wrong about so many things. He was. But he was right about so many things too. And this is where Charles Darwin goes, I think I understand how nature, how things evolve. Here's the mechanism. And it would have been better if we named my dog Darwin, but we didn't. We chose a different science name. Were they right? It was your dog was the middle? Yeah. My dog's okay. middle. Middle. Boom, boom. All right. So here's how it, here's, here's what he came up with. Let's take every other one. Want to do every other one, Mrs. Smith? Sure. Want to go first? Sure. Okay. So living things overproduce, populations grow, and more offspring are born than survive. In other words... Not every single offspring is going to survive. And we're going to start to talk about fitness. You know what I mean? So dependent upon the population and the survival rate, some species have more offspring because they have less survive. You know, humans typically only have a few because their survival rate is greater. Where like a fruit fly is going to have how many at one time because how many of those little fruit flies are you going to squash or not have survive from egg to maggot to fruit fly? Look, but true. Uh, second one, there's variation among members of the species. If we were sitting in class, I would have you look around. If we were sitting in class, you'd be looking around, boom, boom, boom. You'd be like, everybody in this class looks different than me. Right? If I get a hundred golden retrievers and stick them in a room with you, they will all have some similar, some will be taller, some will be shorter, some will have, maybe their feet will be more webbed than the other one. Webbed feet and a golden retriever, right, and a dog, what's that? Yeah, that happens. Um, there's all kinds of different traits. So when we look at the members of the species, they're not all exactly the same. So what else did Darwin notice? So there's competition between species for food, for shelter, for resources. I mean, think about it. I mean, Mr. Suter and I talk about competition all the time. It's not just like that I'm competitive. That's ingrained in our, in our somewhere in our ancestry that we have to compete for something because oh, we have to compete to survive. We, there is a, there is a struggle to survive. There is, you know, we want to make sure that as a individual, that we survive. And then the individual that wins, the one that wins that struggle is the one that reproduces. So in nature, being best fit, having the best traits to survive in an environment will get you to be the one that reproduces. So... Organisms with suitable variations will survive and reproduce. So if you have something, if you have a variation that makes you more suitable to survive, you're more likely to reproduce. And if you're more likely to reproduce, you're more likely to pass that trait on to the next generation. So uh, this is a really kind of simplistic example. It's actually maybe in some regards not even a 100% true example, but you have to take another class to get into that uh, for fun. But if you look at the pepper moth, this has been like the classic example of this forever, even though there's whatever. Um, you had white moths and you had black moths. And so let's say that these two moths are sitting on a tree and the tree is white. Which one is a bird going to see? They're going to see the black one. It stands out. The black ones get eaten more often than the white ones. So there's more white ones in the population. Then industrial revolution happens. The trees get covered in soot. Now the white ones stand out more. And now being a dark colored moth makes you more likely to survive. And so these four things that we just talked about are the mechanism that Darwin proposed. So when we say evolution and people are like, I don't believe in evolution. I don't believe in the evolutionary theory. First of all, you cannot not believe that things change because they do. So we put that aside. Now, how do they change? That's the evolutionary theory. That's the one where we say all the science, everything that we know points to this. And so all the science right now points to things overproduce, there's variation, they struggle, and the ones that are best fit for an environment reproduce. 
Ashton asked in the chat, seashells on mountains are from before the mountain was formed. Yes and no. I mean, it, it, it kind of would be like... It, Potentially? Yeah. Like, if the mountain was under... Like, say, that area was underwater at a time. Now, was it underwater because the oceans were deeper? Or was it underwater because there was some geological thing that formed the mountain and pushed the ground up and now it's above the water, whatever. We don't need to get into that so much, but yeah, potentially. Take a geology class. But Ashton, nice to see you, by the way. Nice to see you. I don't know if I've seen you, if I've seen you in the chat before. Jose Nico, is that new? Jose. He's my first period, one of my first period ones. One of my rock stars. Glad he's here. All right. So actually that's where we're kind of pausing today because we have a couple of things to get into. We haven't, Showing you the evidence. And so I was a firm, when I was your age, I was firm, set. Evolution wasn't real. Really? Yeah. When I was younger, I mean, I, I, I grew up in a church and I grew up in a very religious family. And I was like, there's nothing to evolution. The first time a science teacher showed me the evidence for evolution, my head literally exploded. Because I was like, what is that? And so stay with us this week because shortly, by the end of the week, we're going to get into here are the reasons that science believes this. And that evidence, we'll just say hashtag mind blown. And you've already seen some of it, right? Every organism on Earth is made of cells. Every organism on Earth has DNA. With Every DNA. organism on Earth has DNA that four bases. AGCC. Proteins. You've already seen a lot of it. Anyway. Mean 20 amino acids. Uh, what else do we need to do? Anything? Oh, this is Mrs. Noble. I'm here for the first time. Because Jose Nico bought me today for the bounty water fight. Woo! Nice. I'm going right there and I'm putting it in. All right. So I got to get that out of there. All right. So um, bounty. Anybody oh, here? Yeah. Remember, you have to say who brought you. I'm new. Such and such brought me. Irrelevant to the topic, but I just finished my slide number 37. Shay, that is not irrelevant. That is awesome. That's what we need people to do. We'll Thank be looking you. at that slideshow either tomorrow or Thursday. Tomorrow and Thursday, are, I'll, I'll, I'll let people know, are weird for me. My wife's going to have surgery tomorrow. We don't know when she needs to be dropped off. So at some point, I need to run her to Hershey and drop her off. And some point on Thursday, I need to drive to Hershey and pick her up. So if those two events happen during this time, it will either be Mrs. Smith by herself or we won't have a live stream or we'll change the time. I'm not really sure yet what's going to happen, but we will let you know as soon as we know. Um, anybody here for bounties other than Mrs. Noble? I know I saw Leah's name. Leah, did, are you admitting that Alexia brought you or did somebody else bring you? Or are you here of your own accord? Ashton, did anybody bring you or did you just show up? I mean, like, great if you just showed up, but. Yeah. You know what the problem with the bounty is, maybe? The people are like, but I don't get the bonus points for coming. You get the bonus points because I came. Yeah. Is that the well, problem? I should point out that, like, I don't know. I don't want to call her out, but Leah's, Leah's been staying on top of her stuff. Like, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not. She just maybe couldn't meet this time. I think somebody who said earlier, oh, Mark, Mark's here. And he was like, I finally woke up in time to be here. Woo! <laughs> I feel that. I do too. So nobody's here for the bounty. Bounty still stands tomorrow, depending on what happens. Should we, should we give the person that comes bonus points too? I want the bounty to work. So the person that brings you gets bonus points, but you get bonus points for showing up with them? I don't care. I don't care either. So call your friends and say, if you come, I get points, but you get points too. She said peace out. Like she like Leah left? Oh, man. <laughs> Said peace. <laughs> All right. So, 
Uh, Dominic is here because no, Ashton's here because evolution is very interesting topic. Good man, Ashton. I'm, I'm glad that you joined us for that. If you weren't here yesterday, go watch the first one. Go watch the first one. Uh, tomorrow we continue this idea of evolution. Why? Why? Why does science think? Why does all the science point to this being the best theory? Remember, evolutions change over time. We can't argue with that, and you're making us a slideshow about that right now. What is the mechanism, and why does science think that's what happens? We'll talk more about that tomorrow. 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 <laughs> it's Wednesday. Tomorrow. <laughs> it will only be 13 days left. <laughs> so weird. No. Eight. After today, right? Well, we haven't discussed Memorial Day yet. So it might only be seven. You better stick with us, guys. We love you. Wash your hands. Take care of yourself. We will see you.